Hey guys, it's Charlie Tom Logan back with another video for you. I had a very late delivery yesterday from Intel and it was the i5-13400. I say late because it was late in the day rather than late from them. Although they were announced at CES on Tuesday, uh, which was a surprise to a lot of us because we knew they were going to be announced but nobody seemed to know when it was going to be. So it arrived for me yesterday, I had a really late one last night, spent the day on it today, and we are here now with results, full review, there's more uh, benchmarks and results on the OC3D website, so if you would like to go and have a look over there and uh, pick apart the graphs a little bit more, please feel free. Also, because it does help, like, subscribe, comment, and more importantly, if you like the review, share it with your friends and stuff as well. Put it on Facebook, on the groups, all of that sort of thing. Anyway, my approach for this sort of stuff is chatting with a mate in a pub. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm lucky enough to get to play with quite a lot of new stuff. So I'm just going to give you my thoughts on it and maybe why it might be a good idea. And at the same time, why it might not. Now, the 13400, we're being told $197. We don't know a GBP price yet. No idea why, I also can't find it for sale in the UK yet either. So we'll say $197, £197, hopefully. Because obviously once you take that, bring it into the UK, pay all the VAT and stuff, prices can creep up. But we'll hope that exchange rates kind of offset the VAT. I doubt it, but we'll, who knows. So £197. Uh, because it is uh, Intel, this does mean that you are still going to have options for DDR4 motherboards. Now, I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily going to say buy DDR4 new over uh, a DDR5 kit, but if you already have a DDR4 kit in your current system and you're going to get a motherboard, then it could be a sensible way for you to save some money. Um, Obviously, there are a lot of uh, DDR4 boards available, but you don't have to go Z790. You can go B760 because those boards have started to arrive. And here's a few I prepared earlier. Now, these are all here for review, but I didn't find out until the announcement on Tuesday that I was actually allowed to do anything with them. So this is a pile of work that I do need to do. But most of these could be a great match for... 13400. The other thing with the 13400 is, I'll leave these here now, uh, the 13400 is, uh, compared to the 12400, it now has e cores. So the old 12400 used to just have six p cores and they were hyper threaded, so there were 12 threads available or 12 cores. But what they've done now is they've added the four e cores on as well, so there are 16 threads available or 16 cores available to you on this. Uh, temperature wise and power usage wise, it was all very good. Admittedly, because I used the same cooler and the same rig for all of the Intel processors, it looks very good in the graphs. But I did also test it with, and I have to move the baby cat. Um, I did also use it with a generic 120 millimeter cooler. This one is actually from uh, NZXT. I, I, it's just one that I grabbed, but I use the Cooler Master Hyper 212. Uh, it's just over there out of shop. But anyway, I used that and I was low 60 degree temperatures with the fan on quiet for it. Now, what that does mean is you don't need to spend an awful lot of money on cooling because it does get to a point where it doesn't really make a lot of difference. And when I tested this, I had it on silent mode and still got those temperatures. So temperatures are good, uh, uh, power usage is okay also. One of the things that I will say is I did consistently see 4.6 gigahertz on the P cores and 3.3 gigahertz on the E cores, pretty much all the time. There is a little bit of fluctuation because the 4.6 is the turbo speed, but it does mean that when needed, they are all running at that. It's not a single core that is doing it, it's literally boosting to all of those. So I think one of the things to see with this is that it's not kind of reaching out with the single core for that clock speed because the silicon is clearly capable of it. Uh, it's a shame that it's not an overclocking skew because I do think there would be a lot more to be had from this. 
but nevertheless 4.6 across all of the uh, P cores is a nice number for a 200 pound processor. Now when we do go into the results I actually thought that the content creation and things like uh, Blender and Cinebench did better than I was uh, expecting. But when you compare that to the 12400, that is, that is going to be because of those four extra e cores that you do now have on the uh, processor than you did before. When it did come into comparisons with gaming, though, it was at times there or thereabouts the 7600X. It kind of traded places with it. We do know that there is a non X. 7600 coming although we haven't got confirmed prices but it's looking like it's going to be more expensive than this but the non x would be a uh, possible uh, competitor for this the only thing to remember with that though is it is definitely going to mean that you need a new motherboard and it is also definitely going to mean that you need ddr5 so uh, with all of the graphs that you've seen, again, don't forget you can go to the Overclock 3D website and have a look at more. But my gut feeling on this is it's a uh, it's not a budget processor because £200 is not you know bargain basement. But it is the first of them that we'll see because we do know that we're going to be seeing the i3s with just four P cores. So with this, six P cores, hyper threading, and then the E cores as well. It's an entry level way in to, um, there's no reason why this couldn't be able to do content creation work. Sure, it's not going to do it particularly fast, but it's also not going to leave you asleep either, especially compared to, if you look at the Blender scores, I think it took 10 minutes off of the 12400 score. That's a huge difference. Uh, gaming, again, it isn't going to break any world records whatsoever. But for £200, for someone that is trying to build something on an extreme budget, I genuinely, and you're, I'm saying an extreme budget if you're buying new stuff and you want to build a gaming rig, it is not going to be a slouch either. So I think it's a very aggressively priced processor. Uh, I think it's going to do extremely well. It does give you a lot of budget options. I think maybe even some people may think that the B760 stuff may be a little bit too expensive and they may then go into whatever the H generation boards are going to be because they'll be cheaper still but they won't look as nice, they won't have as many features, they won't have as many like um, USBs and NVMEs and that sort of stuff on them. This is entry level enthusiast kind of level boards but we already know these boards are probably going to be as much as the processor if not a bit more with some of these as well but we'll time will tell when it comes to working with these and overclocking them and features and stuff uh, so there you have it boys and girls we have a new 13 uh, well we have a new 400 series now I would say personally I really really liked the 11 400 that was a blinder of a processor I think the 12 400 was just kind of an iteration on it was you know they hadn't really done a great deal with this they have added in those e cores which will help but i think my gut feeling is they needed to be a little bit more generous with the clock speeds on this i think if we'd seen 4.8 4.9 as a boost on this it would have been an absolute barnstormer but we do have to remember there are going to be the 13500 and the 13600 processors to come above this but for 200 quid you can't really sniff too much at it it is going to get the job done it will be cool ish as long as you don't use like a tiny tiny little cooler uh, and obviously ddr4 won't be a bad thing anyway <clears throat> please excuse me coughing i'm still getting over some illness over the christmas and new year period but thank you very much for tuning in like subscribe comment as i've said don't forget you can go to the website Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to have a cup of tea.